Hello guys and welcome to this new video. Today we are going to talk about the data science skills. We are going to learn about the theory that is behind all the tools that are used in data science, machine learning, data analysis, etc. The purpose of data science is solving business problems. Sometimes it requires some basic programs or some basic tools. Some other times we need to use complex algorithms and very advanced tools in order to get our mission done. But remember, the most important thing is solving the business problem. So let's start by analytical hard skills. First, we have programming. Python and R are the most used in data science. We have also databases where we need to have knowledge about SQL and new SQL databases. The second point we have probability theory. This theory is behind a lot of applied machine learning algorithm and the most used, for example, in natural language processing. The third point is mathematics and statistics. For mathematics, we have two topics. We have linear algebra and we have calculus. The fourth point is machine learning skills. Then we have data wrangling. And finally, we have data visualization. We also need some soft skills, such as teamwork, communication, business knowledge, problem solving, and you need to keep yourself updated every day. Now, we will talk in details about the points mentioned earlier. As we all know, data can come from everywhere. It can come from websites, from different companies. We can find it in different tables. We can find it in different files, etc. And this data is stored in databases. For databases, we have two types. Data can be stored in tables. Thus, we need to apply SQL or other data that is not stored in tables, which means no SQL. And nowadays, we have MongoDB as one of the most used no SQL databases worldwide. Then we have R. R is more used for statistics, linear algebra, and calculus. For example, it has packages such as Pragma and MATLAB that make working with matrices very, very easy. And also working with calculus, for example, to create functions for regression, linear regression, multi-line linear regression, etc. And of course, we have Python. Python can be used in a project of data science from the beginning until the end. So we can say that it, it is an end-to-end -end programming language for data science. Because with Python, we can do data wrangling, data visualization, machine learning algorithms, applying it to natural language processing, computer vision, etc. We have said for mathematics, for data science, it can be classified into two categories. The first category is linear algebra. So in linear algebra, we have to know about vectors and matrices, row echelon form and reduced row echelon form. This can help you to decide whether a system has a solution, a finite set of solutions or it has no solutions at all. The third point is we have to learn what is a determinant, a rank, and we also have to work with dimensions. The third point is eigenvalues and eigenvectors. For example, eigenvectors are very, very important when dealing with an unsupervised machine learning algorithm which is called 
PCA principal component analysis, which is basically reducing the dimensions of our data into small dimensions in order to make it simple for using. This is based on eigenvectors where we have some vectors that do not change with rotation. The fifth point is diagonalization of a matrix. This is also a very, very important to know in data science and in linear algebra. So applying this to our industry or to our projects from the algorithms is very, very important. The second class is calculus and multivariate calculus. The first point we have to know is integrals, derivatives, and extreme values. The integrals are very, very used, for example, in probabilities when calculating with probabilities and when working with continuous distributions. The probability that an event or some events can occur is based on the, the, the surface between a graph and an axis, which is basically based on integrals. Derivatives also are very, very important and are very applied in all in a lot of machine learning algorithms. The second point is chain rule and gradients. Chain rule is basically a chain of derivatives that can help us to find derivatives of complex functions or of functions that have a lot of variables that need to be proceeded step by step. For example, if we have some trigonometric functions that are of power 7, of power 10, of power 15. So chain rule can really, really help us to find this kind of derivatives. Gradient also is a process that is used mainly in deep learning and it is based on finding the optimal points and the best direction in order to find the best solution for our algorithm without wasting a lot of time and without making a lot of difference between the theory and the practical values. The third point is Newton's method. This method is applied for approximations, for example, in linear regression, if we find a line with its components and we are going to compare the theoretical value and the practical values, this can help us to decide whether our algorithm is efficient and with a high level of efficiency or not. We have also Tyler expansion, which is also used for regression and approximations. And lastly, we have Lagrange multipliers. Statistics for data science can be classified into four main points. The first one is central tendency, which covers the mean, the median, mode, skewness, and courtesis. The second one is variability. In variability, we talk about percentiles, range, quartiles, interquartile range, variance, standard deviation, and standard error. The third point is about tests. We have Z-test, T-test, F-test. We have ANOVA, which means analysis of variance. We have K-square test, P-value, and critical value. And the last point is regression. Regression can be classified into two categories. The first one is linear regression, and the second one is multiple linear regression. Now we talk about probability theory. In probability theory, the first thing that we have to know is what is a simple space, what is an event, complement rule, union, intersection, and general rule. Then we have to talk about conditional probability, which means that, for example, the probability of the event A to happen given an event B. So this is 
called conditional probability. We have multiplication rule, which goes with the independent events. For example, we have two events, A and B. We have the probability of A and we have the probability of B. For example, these two events are independent if the probability of the intersection is the probability of multiplication. We are going to see this in details in the next videos. We have also to learn about mutually exclusive events and one of the best theorems and the most used in machine learning is Bayes' theorem. After that, we have to learn about random variables. So we have two types, we have discrete and we have continuous. We have, this, we have two types of functions that are used in probability. For example, if we have probability events that is happening to a specific value okay, of population or when we are dealing with range. For example, we have at least this value more than this value. Okay, so we have this cumulative dense function. Then we, we have distributions. We start by continuous distributions, which we have four mainly used. We start by uniform, the normal or the Gaussian, exponential and the chi-square distribution. Then we have the discrete distributions, which means dealing with Bernoulli, binomial and Poisson. Now we can talk about machine learning. In machine learning, we have supervised learning, where we have labeled data. We have supervised learning, where data is not labeled. We have also reinforcement learning. Advanced machine learning, which can be first classified as deep learning, where we have to apply all these algorithms based on neural networks for advanced studies, for convolutional neural networks, sequence models, etc. that can be applied in natural language processing and computer vision. Using, for example, some advanced packages in Python, such as PyTorch, TensorFlow, Keras, etc. Like we said before, data visualization is very, very powerful skill that you have to learn. We will talk about some of the best tools that are used worldwide in data visualization. We start by Power BI, which is from Microsoft. Tableau, which is used by most of international and multinational companies. Pixans, Python, which has a lot of libraries for data visualization, such as Matplotlib, Seaborn, Dash, Plotlib. We have also R that uses R Shiny for building web applications. Web applications are very used in company because it will create for you some applications that you are going to use every day based on your data. For example, if we are working in trading, every day we have new data sets. What you can do is build a web application using R Shiny that gives you visualizations, for example, based on your data without creating programs every day. And also we have Excel. Excel is very used nowadays for data analysis, data visualization, because with Excel, you can have a file, which is a table that contains all our data. In this file, we can do data wrangling, we can do data visualization, and we can do also statistics and probabilities in the same file and on the same sheets. We have also talked about data wrangling, which is a very, very important process to understand your data set and get it ready to apply it for machine learning algorithms. We start by cleaning our data, discovering and finding the meaning and the insights, the relationships between the different data types in your data set, structuring and making it, for example, in the form of tables, in the format of files that you are 
usually working on you validate your data set and then you are going to publish it finally we are going to talk about some business knowledge that you need to earn as a data scientist first of all you have to learn about some basic business concepts on marketing finance human resources and also management because when you are dealing with projects so you are going to work with a project manager and of course in a project we have some constraints of times and contexts of money dealing with people so you have to learn how to deal with all these kinds of things that are occurring during your project in order to make your mission and your path easier for more insights on your results so we have arrived to the end of this video and i thank you for watching it see you in the next video